the Django Unchained. Tarantino. Django? Not the Django? Samuel L. Jackson. I'm guessing uh, Samuel and, uh, and Tarantino are probably like friends or something. Because, bro, you keep putting him in everything. Well, well, it's Pulp Fiction and, and this, I guess. So we just start out like this? Unchained. <laughs> but did Tarantino make a... <laughs> Did he make a slave movie, guys? He didn't do that, did he? Well, I guess if he made a, you know, Inglorious Bastards movie, I guess it, you know they. All right. Solid pull focus. All right, so we're definitely somewhere out west. Bro, Harvey Weinstein was in everything, like everything apparently he, he was in the the background of everything like well does it make sense why he got put away right um he was doing a lot of craziness guys what did everyone have to do to get into this movie that's the question but why are those trees the only trees with frost on them? I mean, I get it. They're trying to depict a, a super excessively cold region, right? Obviously, they're in the mountains. We saw that based off the previous scene. But why are those the only trees with, like, icicles hanging off of them? Oh, okay. Just the ones in the foreground. Imagine walking on this frozen ground with no shoes on. 1858. Okay. Somewhere in Texas. Wait, Texas has mountains? Whoa. Maybe like the northwest, maybe? State your business or prepare to get wing. Calm yourselves, gentlemen. I mean you no harm. Like an old dentist? I'm Dr. King Schultz. This is my horse, Fritz. <laughs> kind of doctor? Dentist? The dentist. Obviously. Now, are you... Bro, pay attention to what's on top of his cart, bro. His wagon. Are you the Speck Brothers? And did you purchase those men at the Greenville slave auction? So what? So what? Is there a Greenville, Texas? I wish to parlay with you. Speak English. He is. I'm oh, sorry. Now, amongst your inventory, I've been led to believe is a inventory. specimen I'm keen to acquire. Hello, you poor devils. Is there one amongst you who was formerly a resident of the Karukan plantation? What's your name? Django. Then you're exact. I mean, obviously, it was Jamie Foxx out of all out of all the guys here. Um, because Jamie Foxx looks like a main character. He has the bone structure. Exactly the one I'm looking for. Stop talking to him like that. Like what? Like that. My good man, I'm simply trying to ascertain... Speak English, goddammit. He, he is speaking English. Every batic gesture, or are you pointing your weapon at me with lethal intention? Oh, very well. Oh! The horse? Bro, he shot the horse in the face. <laughs> yeah, didn't expect that. Didn't expect Fancy Pants to do that, bro. What is going on? I'm sorry to put a bullet in your beast, but I didn't want you to do anything rash before you had a moment to come to your sense. <laughs> you God. I do believe I have one, two, three, four, five witnesses. Not sure they can actually be one of any of your witnesses, technically, by definition, in 1858 in Texas. We're going to that fact. Damn legs busted! Yeah, that's out. fine. Now, uh, if you could keep your caterwauling down to a minimum, I'd like to finish my line of inquiry with young Django. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> okay. Speck, Mr. Speck, how much for young Django here? Okay. Oh, iron is nasty business. Oh, that's gonna get infected. Could you hold this for a moment? 
think. Oh, you, oh, you're not from here. You know, you're not from here. Django, get up on that horse. Also, on the so horse. Were you? So basically, every single one of the, the you know, the, the the tenants are to be broken. Right? Get on the horse. Go ahead and hold this firearm for me. I take that window. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at him like, bro, what? I'd like to purchase your brother's snag. Also, Mr. Speck, I'm afraid I will require a bill of sale. Do you have one? You go to hell, dentist. <laughs> I thought not. <laughs> no worries. Take that rifle. Right. Put a bullet in his head, bury the two of them deep, and then make your way to a more enlightened area of this country. Hey, definitely take the second option. Choice is yours. Oh, and on the off chance there are any astronomy aficionados amongst you, mm -hmm. the North Star is that one. Okay. Ta -da. <laughs> this is intriguing. Nothing to talk about. Oh, blueberry! Didn't I give you my last apple? You called them blueberry? Tell you what, boys. Take me to the dock in El Paso. I'll get you your freedom. No, no, please. Oh. Okay. <laughs> this is not the same movie that we see, guys. This is obviously like a fantasy, right? Um, but you know, okay, we're here. We're here to watch the slave fantasy. Apparently, guys, it's the weirdest thing ever. But I'm here for it, absolutely, guys. Also, really quickly, the set looks amazing, guys. Amazing. I don't know if they found like an old, you know, the Western ghost town and and fixed it up, or they just rebuilt all this in the middle of the desert, guys. Um, either way, it looks great. Okay, so firstly, the first question I have to ask is, where is this guy from? Him. The dentist. What country? Because he's way too civilized for the United States of America at this time. Take two of these tonight, <laughs> and then in the morning... Yes, he's on a horse. Okay, well... Like something tells me that he's not going to get the same treatment that the other people uh, that are in the same situation are, well, would be getting. Uh, I'm guessing this is more like the familial tie when uh, people would be able to somehow escape this absolute farce uh, or they were given their freedom. But the first thing that a lot of these people would do would, uh, would be to buy their family, right? And then they would obviously own their family so their family can no longer be sold. Um, I'm guessing that's what the thing is. That's how this is going to happen. Maybe, right? That's, that's the vibe I'm getting, right? Uh, because something tells, again, this is not the same thing. By then, we'll be serving breakfast. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what the hell you think you're doing, boy? Get the f out of here. I'm guessing we're going to, this is just going to be a constant thing, right? I said, to, okay. All right. Okay, we're here. I have to get myself mentally prepared for the constant barrage. Sit down, my boy. Oh, no. When he said boy, it didn't sound as, as crazy as it, it, it generally does. I think it was the my part. <laughs> These days, I practice a new profession. Oh, yeah? Bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. All right. Kill him, I transport that man's corpse back to right. the authorities. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Okay. I show that corpse to the authorities, proving, yes, indeed, I truly have. At which point the authorities pay me the bounty. All right. So, like slavery. It's like, are they playing off the story of Bass Reeves? Guys, it feels like they may, right? The, um, uh, what's that show? It was a cartoon or something made after Bass Reeves. Was um, oh man, what's it called? Um, it's really old, guys. Really old. Um, high hole silver. So something about that, guys. I don't know. Lone gunman. 
my brain is just like foggy for some reason. I have no idea the name of the like the the cartoon that was made after I guess you know Bass Reeves. But I think this what we're looking at is um like some weird collision of stories happening here. Uh, I'm not saying that he's playing the part of Bass Reeves, but if he, the bounty hunter, purchases this guy, um, and then what? Something happens to him, and then, 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 then the Django basically becomes a bounty hunter. Then that's basically the story of Bass Reeves. It's a flesh for Let's cash business. I need your help. If you're not in a position to refuse, all the better. So for the time being, I'm going to make this slavery malarkey work to my benefit. Okay. Still, having said that, I feel guilty. So, I would like the two of us to enter into an agreement. Okay. Don't you? I know what they look like, all right? Good. So here's my agreement. Because I'm guessing they did something absolutely terrible to him. <laughs> no! Um, sir. If she just. Guys, I'm guys. Things just can't randomly happen like this. Now you can get. Right, it's time to go, bro. On two men, two rivals up. I mean, this is planned. This was like obviously planned, guys. Maybe he's like one of the bounties or something. Uh, is he masquerading as someone else? Maybe because um, he said the name Bill Sharp. No one else freaked out, so it tells me that most likely uh, that's not his name at all. On his roof, two men, two rivals on that roof. It doesn't seem like someone would just do this random. Before I've had my day in court. You mean like he did our sheriff? <laughs> Shot him down like a dog in the street. Yes, right. that's exactly what I mean. Not to shoot me down like a dog in the street. <laughs> Guys, this movie is spectacular. The pacing of it is great. It, it instantly sucked me in. It just. Mm. This is also the second time we're seeing a scene where um, characters are being like lit beautifully uh, by rim light. Guys, this is the second time. Well, Marshall Tatum. May I address you and your deputies and apparently the entire town of Daughtry as to the right. incident that just occurred? They're all here. The man lying dead in the dirt, who the good people of Daughtry saw fit to elect right. as their sheriff, who went by the name of Bill Sharp. What was his real name? a wanted outlaw by the name of Willard Peck. Okay. With a price on his head of $200. You're encouraged to wire him. He'll back up who I am. And who your dear departed sheriff was. <laughs> well played. I mean, I mean, guys, he basically walks around like he owns everything. I guess that's how kind of bounty hunters are anyway, right? In Let's other see. words, Marshall. Spectacular movie so far, guys. Like, just mind-blowingly good, because in terms, of, again, the pacing is great. It's filmed beautifully, obviously on film, not anything, you know, over sharp or just digital. Um, looks great. Scoring is great. Teal, orange. Boys got sand. I got no use for with sand. It's, it's kind of the, the hard ER for me, personally. You know when she was sold? You know where she came from? How do you know her name? He breaks, he, he just constantly breaks all of like the, you know? <laughs> what is her name? Broomhilda. Broomhil Broomhilda? When we gain access to these plantations, we'll be putting on an act. You'll be playing a character. Huh? Nah, bro. Huh? That's not it. And now, Django, you may choose your character's costume. He's gonna let me pick up my own clothes. Use. I mean... Wait a second. Okay, hold on. 
think put yourself in put yourself in the time put yourself in that t exact time hear me out this man is sharp right he is absolutely gq front cover he looks great right mm. and i'm not sure i would use such a a bold like uh you know, bold color, right? But I mean, I guess that's the point, right? To stand out in the environment of, of just greens and, and, and browns and, and, and like whites, right? Like stand out in the actual, he's popping off the screen right now. Great job. It's, it's like you've been doing this forever. You've got your hair cut. I see you got a nice little lineup going, bro. Look at that. He did well for himself. You and your Jimmy rode from Texas to Tennessee to buy one of my yeah. No appointment, no nothing. Oh, I'm afraid so. Well, what if I was to say I don't like you or your fancy pants and I wouldn't sell you a tinker's damn. Now, what you got to say about that? Uh, Mr. Bennett. Uh, I don't know. If you are the businessman I've been led to believe you to be, you could provide one of your loveliest black creatures to escort Jangle year around your magnificent grounds. Oh, right. Absolutely. Uh, Bettina. Yes, sir, Big Daddy. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Yes, sir, Big Daddy. So we already know what's going on here, right? So you have all these women on your property, right? And you were absolutely copulating with every single one of them. Every single one of them. And they can't say no. Guys, such such odd, just just you know, such odd times these were. All right, you nasty, Big Daddy. Django is a free man. You understand? No. You can't treat him like any of the other around here because he ain't like any of the other around here. You got it? You want I should treat him like white folks? No. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> then I don't know what you want, Big Daddy. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Uh, you just treat him like you would Jerry. Who's Jerry? I'm guessing he's an imbecile, most likely, and treat him like he's an imbecile. That's crazy. Didn't you hear him tell you I ain't no slaves? So you really free? Yes, I was free. You mean you want to dress like that? <laughs> See, what do you want? I'm looking for three. I think, he, listen, for the time, he's definitely flamboyant, but, but, is this white man? Is that them? Oh, that's them. I mean, bro, all of the, the begging and pleading you're doing right now is absolutely worthless because it's already happening. Right, so just stand up. Is that who you was looking for? Yep. You go to that tree and keep going that away. I think this is a famous uh, like plantation house. Uh, where are we currently? Um, obviously, we're not in Tennessee. Um, not with this. Not, not with all the Spanish moss right here, at least. Um, <clears throat> Bro, I've, I promise you, I've seen this structure before. Um, but all right, let's go. Let's go we'll get that white man I came in with. The fear of ye and the dread of ye. Like, imagine holding a Bible and talking and saying anything about the Lord while cracking a whip. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, I, I, how is this going to work? You're definitely, uh, uh, you know, definitely a slave fantasy. Right? I can definitely tell you that that's what this is—a fantasy movie, uh, similar to the the second uh, Birth of a Nation. Um, that's the vibe I'm getting from this here. Uh, you know, interesting to see. I mean, you know, like the op I'm interesting to see the opposite of what you generally see. You know, what actually happened, right? But. All right. Keep it funny. Is it keep it funny? Y'all want to see something? I want to. 
Don't want to see something? Uh, no. Where are they? That's Big John. That's you don't know if you're positive? I don't know what positive means. It means you're <laughs> sure? Yes. Yes what? Yes, I'm sure that's Ellis Brittle. Oh, how did he get hit from that angle? He wasn't even at that angle, but I get it. On screen, it looks better if it you know pops out the back and you know from the front to the back. Even though we're not looking at that angle, you know, listen, uh, it's solid. Blood all over the cotton. That's crazy imagery. Now I reiterate, the warrant states dead or alive. Yeah, bro, I'm not sure if this is gonna work everywhere you go. So when Mr. Freeman and gonna be honest. <laughs> satisfied not really he's not satisfied he's not happy load up the bodies as quickly as you can and let's get out of here <laughs> whoa Ooh, okay Oh, this so, so this was before they perfected the, you know, the hoods. All right, like the actual like the pointy hat. Matt, look, nobody's saying they don't appreciate what Jenny did. What kind of conversation is this, guys? Really, all I had to do was cut a hole in a bag. Do we have to wear them when we ride? A oh, fire. If you don't wear them as you ride up, that just defeats the purpose. Well, I, can't. I mean, bro, I'm pretty sure they they already know who you guys are, right? I mean. It, the town is not that big, right? Just pick all the guys. <laughs> From now on, don't ask me your mind for nothing. Okay. All right, good. Now look. Go home. Let's not forget. The rest of you, go home. While we're here. Okay, I'm confused. Are the bags on or off? Just leave them off. I think we all think the bag was a nice idea. Yeah. Nah, nah, I mean, but eh. not pointing any fingers. Okay. They could have been done better. But nobody can see. Bro, this entire conversation is crazy. So? <laughs> so it'd be nice to see. <laughs> <laughs> the, the carnage is crazy. <laughs> this is such an interesting run. thing. Like, it honestly feels different from all the other Tarantino movies we've seen. It just feels different. Um, you know, equally as great and amazing to encounter, right? And spectacular to see, but it just feels different. All right, go ahead and one tap him. Would you care to? <laughs> oh, you got him. You got him. You got him. Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right. I like that. I mean, no, no complaints here. You didn't hit the horse, right? The trash was taken out. The kid's a natural. Yeah, surprisingly. It's like he's been shooting his entire life, actually. Even though he's a man. That's a gal's where you from named Broomhilda? That's a wild name. I've honestly, ugh, um, okay, listen, I've never encountered anyone with that name, but I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just don't think it's a very, like, I don't know, pretty name. Brunilda is the name of a character in the most popular of all the German legends. Okay. It's a story about Brunhilde? Not Brunhilde. yours. Unless a hero arises brave enough to save her. He's the hero. Does a fellow rise? Yes, Django. As a matter of fact, he does. It's like some like light foreshadowing. A fellow named Siegfried. Okay. The secret saber. He scales the mountain because he's not afraid of it. Maybe the mountain could be like a an extremely hard task. Most likely, again, it feels extremely foreshadowing. He slays a dragon. Who's the dragon? Afraid of him. Okay. And he walks through. So he definitely deletes some big bad guy. No fire. The hellfire could be, how do we translate this maybe? Um, he walks through hell, <laughs> right? Uh, Some place where Broomhelda is held, is held, she's, she's around fire. Um, 
so I guess we're going to encounter fire at sometimes, right? Or it could again just mean something bad, maybe. Because he's not afraid of it. What's not to like? No, I have to admit we make a good team. I thought you was mad at me feeling Big John a little Raj. I mean, yeah, surprisingly, make a great team. Yeah, on that occasion you were tad overzealous, but normally that's a good thing. Just not that time. Partner up for the winter. I think, honestly, if he didn't, then the whole situation would be massively different. All right, going forward. Uh, he had to do that. I mean, I get it. It made him feel really good to do that, but he... I'm not sure that they would have went any other way, right, with you guys. What you mean, partner? As a German, I'm obliged to help you on your quest to rescue your beloved Brunhilde. I like to hang out with more Germans, guys. All right. We got a custom saddle. Like the old version of putting rims on your car, maybe? So generally, when someone is in you know, a body of water, and then you start seeing like bubbles pop up around. No. Never mind. Never mind. I, these bubbles came out of nowhere, and I'm frightened. Okay, I'm slightly. Never afraid of that. Let's meet him. Call one of Rob's stagecoaches, and he didn't mind getting people to do it. But where are, the, are these bounties coming from, like the Pinkertons or something, bro? Why don't you save your wife by doing what I do? This is what I do. People and sell their corpses for cash. Okay. <laughs> this corpse is worth $7,000. And you get a third of that. Now quit your fucking insurance. Right. Right. Life. <laughs> Boy giggles. Oh, the kid thought he was playing. Yes, you know. Guys, firing from the hip like that with that much accuracy? Oh my God. Yeah, he's a monster. He, he has turned himself into an absolute beast. Bad Chuck Wilson and meaner Bobby Lau and three of their acolytes. Huh. Well, just leave them out here. They ain't going nowhere. No. Let's come in and out of snowy all. snow and get yourself some coffee. Another great um, transition, guys. Consistently great transitions. Creative. Super creative. When they tore it back up and then they burnt their runaway all on the cheap. They got damned. <laughs> she ain't no feeling, it, but she ain't good enough for the house no more either. They're gonna try to make her a comfort girl. What's a comfort? Oh. Oh. Not while I got freedom. I think it's probably too late, bro. Because you're not there. Right, so, and the fact that you're not there, she most likely will end up, unfortunately, uh, you know, that is wild. <sighs> not while I got my gun. Okay. I hear you, bro. Go for the buy. I hear you. So, but the farm and makes an offer so ridiculous. The farmer is forced to say yes. Yeah, I think that could probably only happen in these times where things can't be confirmed, and there'll be long stretches of time between uh, you know, encounters, right? So, all right. We're going to offer the buy candy lane? No, it's far too big. Oh, okay. The For a second. Farmer ain't all about the farm. How much do you know about Mandingo fighting? What? Mandingo Continue fighting? Convincing. Thank you. Mm. You want okay. me to play a black slaver? Ain't nothing lower than a black slaver. I mean, you're right. I'm not sure there's... Um, 
Yeah, no, nah, there is. There is. A black slaver is lowered in the hand. Mm. But it has low. Right. Okay. Who's worse, the black slaver or the, or the black house guy? Let's call him. Um, the house guy is pretty bad, right? Um, you know, they're pretty bad guys, right? But yeah, I, I would think the slaver is probably worse. Calvin's father's father put me through law school. One could almost say I was raised to be Calvin's lawyer. One could almost say you. <laughs> Anything else about Mr. What? Candy? He doesn't speak French. Don't speak French to him. It'll embarrass him. Okay. So he wants to masquerade as if he understands it. Okay. Man, do you, do? you don't intend to allow like like uh, a male from the the, the Dinka tribe. Um, I think it's slang is used as someone with a gigantic male phallus, right? Um, but I'll uh, maybe a second to make let's see where this goes, guys. Answer the question. Or like a male dingo from Australia, guys. There's a lot going on here. No, it can't the be awful that. truth. This seems like a good bit of fun. Oh, that punching is crazy. Oh, this is gonna be spectacular. Like, listen, so in the beginning of the movie, I definitely recognize the fact that it's said that Leonardo DiCaprio was in the movie, right? Um, but I completely forgot by now because I haven't seen it. Generally, you will have someone of his stature, let's say, in a film, right? Um, and then not and then not have him from the beginning in the film. Well, and I'll have sweet tea and bourbon. Sweet tea and bourbon. <laughs> the character that this woman is playing is extremely loud. It's very loud. Um, interesting. All right, let's see. That's why they call him Big Fred. Worth every penny. Well, I'll read it there, uh, yeah? Luigi. Come on up now, boy. Uh, yeah? Get yourself a rest. You did a. I said it. Oh, that was that that mm -mm. like the savagery of these humans sitting in a room watching this happen is absolutely disgusting it's, it's disgusting it is it is bad guys you be ready to travel to Candyland tomorrow morning now you here yes sir Mr. Candy. oh before you go Roscoe get Fred here a tall beer You enjoy that boy. You've earned it. Yes, sir. Something tells me that 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 uh, this boy would absolutely demolish you, based off what we just saw. But all right, boy. Roscoe, Coco, go outside and play. <laughs> Sheba, you stay right there. I smelled that. I know you didn't mean me. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, according to Moby, <laughs> if I do business, oh, you thought you think you're different with you? That's why I'm doing business with both y'all. Well, then we got nothing more to talk about. You see, you want to buy beat ass with me? Those are the beat ass niggas I want to sell. Well played, Leonardo. All right. I'm going to say this really quickly. He is absolutely the only person that is not actually saying, well, other than Jamie Foxx, I think. Right? Um, he's the only person that is actually not saying that word. Everyone else is. He's not. He, there's no hard ER here, guys. Gentlemen, I'm going you have my curiosity. Now you have my attention. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, their, their plan seems to be working so far, at least, right? Oh. 
Then obviously the, the, the guys who are seeing this happening, as in the ones that are currently in chains, see him and they're just like, bro, you are filth. Yeah, you're right. The character he is playing is absolutely trash. <sighs> Get back up on your horse. He broke my collarbone. Oh, for God's sake, somebody please help Hoot here back up on his goddamn <laughs> horse. <laughs> oh, now you were one lucky. Oh, okay. I'm about to say, bro, was it that easy to find her? He didn't call her by name, but she's a young lady with marks on her back and speaks German. Now, while it's not wise to assume in this instance, right. I think it's pretty safe. Point yeah, I mean, it's not a common thing. Don't get so carried away with your retribution. That's for real. I mean, I understand what's going on here, bro. I mean, you're playing the part. You're playing the part well, right? But you're doing too much. Okay, you're, you're absolutely doing too much. Keep your head down, right? Don't blow this because the way you're acting is bringing way too much attention to yourself. You lose sight of why we're here. You think I lost sight of that? Yes, I kinda. Do. Stop antagonizing Candy. I would call the man who had me kill another man in front of his son, and he didn't bat an eye. Mm. You remember that? I mean, you can't be the morality police if you're doing all of that, aren't? Can you? Can you? Right. Yeah, I think this structure, uh, you know, you know, there's some issues with the foundation here, guys. Fix it. Get on out that tree. Yes, sir. Don't get out the tree. Stay in the tree. Don't get out that tree. How far he get off the property? About 20 miles off the property. Pretty far because there's that lean he got. Definitely very glad we have subtitles here. Mr. Mogi, what about my $500? Okay. You gonna reimburse me? I don't feel sympathy for you at all. But, but let's continue, personally. You will? Yep. Uh, you can't say. I mean, I get it. I see, I see the inside of your, you know, your being, right? Your essence. I see it, right? But you can't say that Django is going to blow it and you're doing this, right? You obviously see this man is weak. He's won the three fights. Okay. The last thing you want to do is blow your cover right now. You did not come for him. Right? I get it. Absolute travesty. Right? But you didn't come for him. Put your billfold away. You're going to have to excuse Mr. Stone Cypher's slack jawed gaze. He ain't never seen like you ever in his life. Ain't that right, Mr. Stone Cypher? That's right. That man. He just ain't used to seeing a man ripped apart by dogs is all. You all used to it. Well, he's gonna be found out. I'm just a little more used to Americans than he is. Okay, yeah, makes sense. 1850. Yeah. Okay. Oh me. He's super suspicious for some reason. And I get it slightly. But he's super suspicious. I have no idea how long this is going to last for, guys. Ooh. It's like a mental rest. Uh, listen, the movie so far is great. Uh, the way this is going... I don't know how, you know, this is going to end, right? I honestly feel as if they they have to get caught, right? I think that's mandatory um, because of the level of suspicion that um, um, the, the candy guy basically has towards uh, the two main characters, right? Um, the filming of it has been great so far. It definitely feels old, western-y, but yet new, right? Because of the, the shot list or... Um, incredibly creative and um, new feeling. <laughs> it's 
It's a great shout. It almost looks like it was filmed with like a micro four thirds uh, camera based off the fact that it's so wide, but yet the uh, the separation between the foreground and the background is not as like blown or blurred out, guys. It's interesting. Similar shot here. Mm. What's his name, like Clarence or something? <laughs> guys, this man here. All right, stop looking at him like that. Obviously looking at Django, thoroughly confused. He's like, oh, what's, what's going on here? Um, yeah, this is the, the the literal visual depiction of what um, one of these house uh, slaves were, let's say. There are a couple of them still around. A another great, like great almost painterly, uh, this is why I'm kind of leaning more towards like micro four thirds more so than, I don't know, super 35? Guys, it looks really like, again, extremely painterly. The bouquet, the, uh, the out of uh, focus area. Hello, Steven, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my. Ooh. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, up on that nail. Oh, Stephen, you have nails for breakfast. What's the matter? Why you so honored? You miss me? Like I misses a rock in my shoe. Is this okay? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I, you know? I ask you. Django, he is a freeman. This is him? That is <laughs> there. Oh, oh my God. The two of you. Yeah. Django, uh, this is another cheek. Has anyone counted <laughs> like how many times this word is used in like a like per minute? It's <laughs> like a, a record or something. You black bugger like Yes, sir. I, I understand. Well, I'm good. Like there are three of them, guys. Keep this in mind here. Now, earlier in the movie we, they spoke about um like three of the worst people that were involved, like in this thing here, right? The it was the, the black slavers and there was another one, guys. Oh no. <sighs> right, and these guys. Right, I don't know which one was worse, bro. They, they were about the same level of like absolute filth. Can't explain this guy here. I don't like him. It's been a night. Go up in the guest bedroom to get too red. Where is my beautiful sister? Sister? There she is. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is sure. In fact, his sister, but uh, maybe a little bit more. Doctor Schultz, let's go. Come out of here. You know where it is. <laughs> Like you on a rope. Run around here. Run. Uh, Monsieur Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. hospitality dictates I make her available to him. But Monsieur, okay. I mean, those are the rules. And just you run off. Now, gentlemen, I do apologize, but I'm weary from our travels beyond words. <laughs> it is time for me to rest my tired eyes. <sighs> I believe it. Y'all ain't heard the man. Get up out of there. I believe it. Go. Come here. Well, that's one way to do it, guys. I mean, that, that absolutely looks like, well, torture, like I said. Well, it is torture. Is you coming with me? What is this music? <laughs> well, get your brother loving. Um, sie zu finden, mein Fräulein. Um sie zu retten. Bitte trinken Sie. This is mine and unseres gemeinsamen the, Wait, hold on. Where is the mic placement at? Um, the reason why I'm asking is because the ability to hear actually someone swallowing water tells me that it's extremely close. Um, I mean, I get it. The, the, it's framed extremely tightly, but like, where is this mic at? Um, could be maybe like a Sennheiser MK50. Uh, most likely for indoor dialogue, it's like a super, like, ridiculously condenser pencil shotgun mic uh i'm guessing is what they're using because i don't understand how we get that level of clarity of her swallowing water it's phenomenal
Look at that backlight. It's a hero shot, guys. Look at this hero shot. Looking all great and everything. Hurry up, girl. No, no, no. They ain't drinking tonight. Go down guys i think the second half of the movie was filmed better than the first half of the movie uh, don't get me wrong the first half was great looking right but the second half here is crazy look at the blooming of the light guys mm, all right. this looks expensive so big for the ass you know you like it that's because you know it's basically expert level halation happening around these lights here guys it's like it's like glowy it's it's beautiful to guys just admire the frame <laughs> oh my god <laughs> look monsieur condi they were all fine specimens no doubt oh, yeah. yeah there was a lot of, like there was a lot of money put into the second half here guys but the best three by far I'm what? guessing because you have Leonardo, Leonardo here, you have Samuel, you have Jamie Foxx, um, you have this guy right here I've seen before. Uh, you have a lot of like you have a lot of money sitting in this room. So let's you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna absolutely make this second half of this film mind blowing. Samson, his name was Joe. Maybe one day he said he was cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's are. that's plausible. Samson, yes, I want to be able to bill him. As the Black Hercules. <laughs> Black Hercules, isn't that clever? More like Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, why are you here? Go away. Right now. Who's running this place? Is it you or him? Right? I want to know. Said, and I then you can start to implement a grand design. Okay. In other words, first thing is first. First thing's first. Right. For years. Well, hell, I can't imagine two weeks in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks in Boston. Get out of here right now. Joy, I've. But I, I agree. You know, Boston's a little weird. All right. No disrespect here. Okay. Uh, if you're from Boston, all right, that's fine. It's amazing. But you guys speak weirdly. Right, listen, I'm from, again, from New York. Um, so it, it may just be something that is just in me to strongly detest, uh, you know, anything Boston-oriented, uh, specifically the sports team, because they're terrible, right? Along with New Jersey. There are two places that I will just constantly, like, verbally defecate on, and it will be specifically Boston and New Jersey. All of New Jersey. Not all of Massachusetts, just all of New Jersey, mainly, all right? I don't know why that place exists. It looks like this pony's got big eyes for Django. <laughs> well, naturally, it is a soaring eagle that attracts her attention, not the plucked chicken. Oh, 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 bro, your ruse is about to get broken. This guy right here, this trash human right here, right? This absolute filth of an individual right here, right? That guy right there is going to break this entire thing. You wouldn't lie to me now, would you? Of course she's going to. She's going to say no, though. You see, it wasn't me who came to you to see. Show sure what? It was you who approached me to buy one. Show sure what? You weren't there. Ridiculous offer of twelve thousand dollars. You said that. That made me even consider it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Hercules. Black Hercules. You yeah. <laughs> was right, Doctor. That name do have pain. <laughs> Get out of the room right now. LD. It's not quite as much fun as getting to pleasure all the mandingos, <laughs> huh, Sugar Bear? <laughs> <laughs> like Samson, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> You know, Miss Your Candy, mm. the doctor here might be interested in seeing he'll. Bro, that is that is a that is wild, bro. Feel back, seeing how they don't. I haven't. No, 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 no. Stephen's right. You mm. might find. Oh no! Look at the way Django is looking. Okay, see, listen, sir. In order to handle and like conduct yourself correctly in this ruse, you need to act like you care a lot less. All right, I'm telling you. You're too invested. 
divest immediately. Yeah. He is a man of medicine. I'm sure it would fascinate him. The You're too emotional, Django. All right. The pain. The you want to save her? You don't do this. You said you ain't know him. I don't. Yes, you do. I don't. Why is you lying to me? In that case, allow me to propose another proposition. Too soon, bro. Too soon. You should do this at a much later date. Well, not even a later date. You don't know she's here, right? At a later time. Like, hey, let's go out, let's go sit on, I don't know, in the front on the front porch and talk business or something. This is time and a place, bro. I'm all he is. Hurry up, god damn it. Because now he is all in. Okay. Steven. I just can't understand why you won't come talk to these shit get f***ed up around here. You blame me. Uh, fine, fine, friend Steven. I, I... I will be along momentarily. Yes, sir. Well, gentlemen, as you can see, talented as they are, no doubt, in the kitchen from time to time. Now we understand why this scene was filmed so amazingly in comparison. We, I, we understand. This is, this is, it seems like this is the movie almost. Like this is the scene that the movie has been kind of leading up to. It feels like that is the moment we're encountering. Again, hence the reason why it looks so good, sounds so good. Them uh, here to buy no man dingoes. They wants that girl. <laughs> Steve. No, I mean, yes, but. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome, Calvin. <laughs> Bro, listen. You wouldn't pay no never mind and no three hundred dollar, but that twelve thousand that made you real friendly, now didn't it? Yes, it did. Oh my God, I hate this man. Oh, wait a second. Um. Oh, okay, listen, listen. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's worse uh, <laughs> guys um mm, him i think no they're both like someone who is specifically doing this like like a like a, like a black slaver and this this type of person that exists who's worse bro i don't know i think they're about the same amount of garbage absolute garbage because but listen I, okay there were a lot of awards won for this film okay i could definitely tell you this right now without even actually knowing if there were any awards won for this film okay samuel l jackson congratulations you made me just you made me dislike you like to like to the the depth of me i'm not sure i have not not liked a character other than jamie and him from, from Game of Thrones. And my daddy's daddy. Till he up and killed over one day. Well, Ben took care of me. Is he wearing eye son makeup? Of a, of a huge, I would have cut my daddy's goddamn throat and it wouldn't have taken me no 50 years to do it. Nick. Absolutely. Well, let me explain. Um, I think you know, when, when I look at it, for example, why people didn't do things right um i'm about to i don't know this may sound crazy guys but the the issue that i have at least right um the reason why a lot of slaves did not do all of these things is because of a couple of things um if you're pulling people specifically from generally from the region of dahomey right in west africa you're referring to a group of people who um kind of were still living off of the earth ex exclusively uh they did not have any factories or, or any type of manufacturers or anything like that they weren't building gigantic ships that had the ability to traverse uh the transatlantic right let's say they were not doing that. So when they saw specifically a group of people that were coming from the outside with guns and all these other things that they've never encountered, right, specifically uh, at that level, they were absolutely confused. <laughs> okay. So, this, so like 
it's easy to not easy, but when you infect the mind of someone where they forget their strength, uh, you take away their history, you take away their language, take away every single thing that had to do with who they are and who made them what they are in a sense, right? Um, it's, it becomes easy to be a cult leader in a sense, right? So now all these people think that anyone that looks like this person here or the or any other or any slave master they have that look let's say um they think that they are unnaturally powerful in some means right so you've trained them in a sense right by taking every single thing away from them you've trained them uh to never under any circumstance um have any type of uprising because look at look at what i do when i look at how extreme i can be hence the reason why the the whippings and um the hangings right look at how extreme i can be for just the simplest infraction i will do this to your children right this is the this is why chattel slavery was so crazy um like you can have we can have conversations about Every nation having some type of slavery, sure, we can do that, right? But chattel slavery specifically uh, was heinous. Um, they all were, in fact, heinous, guys, right? But for the most part, if you purchased a human, for the most part, right, or you've you got someone because you conquered their land, their kid, guess what, was not a part of it, right? Um, versus chattel slavery in the United States of America that said, basically, you bought a person, right? Um, and then that person had a kid. That kid is now owned by the same, what is this, <laughs> right? That is what the issue is. So you're telling generations and generations and generations that they have to follow this creed because look at how extremely wild I can be, right? By removing body parts off of people while they're still alive. The reason why they didn't do it is because they were conditioned to not do it. I look at it as a cult leader and a cult. Cult leaders, cult leaders can make absolute sure that they can do that. They can make their cult members do whatever they want to do, right? And they will in fact do it because that's what it is. So once you psychologically remove everything about a person, what's left? A shell. Um, someone to be compliant of any human or any other subhuman species on planet Earth. <laughs> human subhuman species. Really? He just made that up. Or, or, or he's listening to uh, um, Carl von Linnaeus or Johann Friedrich Blumenbach, the, the botanist that, uh, that basically promoted this nonsense quackery. Of an Isaac Newton or, or Galileo. These three dimples will be found in the area of the skull most associated with creativity. What are you talking about? Is the skull of old Ben. And in the skull of old Ben, unburdened by genius, uh -huh. these three dimples exist in the area of the skull most associated with civility. Now, bright boy, you were just getting ready to make me a proposition to Bob Hilda. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything led up to here. Well, Hildy, and I can choose to do with my property whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I so desire. And if y'all think my price on desire to do is. <gasps> yeah, I'm not sure that. Um... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure they'd allow that specifically, right? Bloodborne pathogens and, and things. If you care to join me in the parlor, we will be serving white cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 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 boy. Okay, wait. All right, let's go. Spectacular movie, guys. Actually, I was thinking of that poor devil you fed to the dogs today, D'Antonion. And I was wondering what Dumas would make of all this. 
Come again. He doesn't know what you're talking about. Alexandre Dumas. He wrote The Three Musketeers. Yes, of course, Doctor. I figured you must be an admirer. You named your slave after his novel's lead character. Now, if Alexandre Dumas had been there today, I wonder what he would have made of it. You doubt he'd approve him? He probably would not approve of that. Yes, his approval would be a dubious right. position at best. And the fact that he doesn't understand why, he would probably be like, uh, bro. The fact that he doesn't know is even more hilarious to me right now, guys. Even though the situation wasn't funny. Get what I'm saying here, guys? Soft-hearted Frenchie. Uh, okay. Alexandre Dumas is black. Yeah. <laughs> it implies good faith. I'm not from the South. But you are in my house, doctor. Okay. So I'm afraid I must insist. Insist? On what? Did I shake your hand? Oh, then I'm afraid I must insist in the opposite direction. You know what I think you are? Go ahead. You think I am? No, I don't. Bro, you guys got it. Let's go. I think you are a bad loot. Mr. Pooch. If she tries to leave here before this loving German shakes my hand, you cut her ass down. You standing in front of her means nothing to him. You really want me to shake your hand? I insist. If you insist. Okay. No! Oh, God. Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? No! <laughs> Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 My God! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Guys, wait a second! Wait! Wait! <sighs> wait! <laughs> it's too much happening. <laughs> This is the most, this is the unluckiest individual ever. Bro, roll over or something. Roll out of that. <laughs> like there just so happens to be this many people. Oh, right. Uh, honest engine, Django. I swear, I forgot. Hit him. Get him somewhere on his body right now. <laughs> you give up? Uh, Ain't no harm. Believe none of that. Believe nothing he says. I said, I give up. So what you're saying is like all of so all of all everything that has happened I mean I get it what other option do you have here but hmm, I don't want Samuel L. Jackson to, cons to continue breathing air okay okay they're leaving him alive. I got you. Two. <laughs> Calm down now. <laughs> the fact that you feel comfortable grabbing another man's testicles, just so comfortable and confident with it, is is, a little, is wild to me. I disappoint. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know, bro. All right. <laughs> Now, mind you, most of them ideas had to do with and with the foreign parts. Now, that like I historic like his 
historically, I always found that just to be the weirdest thing in the world. Why are you so? Why were you? Why were people so obsessed with 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 specifically uh, genitalia from from slaves? What is it? Because <laughs> I, I don't understand. They seem like. It. I said, what's so special about that? We do that all the time. Hell, fails. The niggas we sell to Laquan Dickie got it worse than. Me. I was so happy, like for a second, when I thought that. That Django was gonna like delete everybody in there, guys. I was so happy, right? But the fact that you're still existing yes. <laughs> is frustrating to me. Low, and that will be the story of you, Django. Ha! <laughs> oh God! Is Smitty Bacall? Smitty Bacall is a leader of this murderous gang of stagecoach drivers, the Bacall Gang. There's a seven thousand dollar wanted dead or alive bounty on him. Like this feels so like bits and pieces of it feels like the story of Bass Reeves, guys. One thousand five. But y'all know I ain't on that manifest, and all y'all know I ain't supposed to be on this trip. But them four men are still back there. They still want it, and that eleven thousand five hundred is up for grabs. And the last thing they'd expect is y'all riding back in there and getting it. Frankie, why don't you take them sticks off that horse and stick them? Don't I'm off you, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Oh, 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 what? I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 so, it's so random, guys. It's, you can't, you, you don't expect none of this craziness to happen consistently. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, oh, my God. All right, so now we absolutely know Samuel Jackson is going to be deleted here. All right, has to happen, mandatory. It's like all I'm waiting for is for him to not be breathing any longer. Your papers. At least bury him. At least, bro. Why is it daytime here and nighttime there? Oh, it's nighttime. I I'm confused. <laughs> Or, or maybe they were kissing from daytime until nighttime. I'm not sure what the oral hygiene was of of slaves back then. In the sweet I'm sure it wasn't amazing. By by. Because if we could base it off of off of um you know Calvin's uh situation, then it was absolutely terrible. Sheba, you help us. Come on. In the sweet. Well, she doesn't like that. Uh -uh. She, th she thought she was special. Oh. Last time I seen oh. you, you oh. had your hands oh. on my. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that. Now, all you black folks. I suggest you get away from all these white folks. Not you, Stephen. Nah, Stephen, go, go, away, go. You belong. Go in the corner, Stephen. We, we have, we definitely have a conversation oh, to have. I said, tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nah. Okay, okay, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, well not, not much of it does, but you get what I'm saying. How did, she must be on, the, well, I don't know how this just happened here. Guys, a rope maybe? Something just yanked her back, like a machine or something. Y'all two run along, man. 
I'm gonna be honest. You, you shouldn't let Sheba go. Tell Sheba to go stand over here by Steven. Miss Cora? Okay, whatever. Go. Bye. Close the door behind you. Sheba, get back in that corner. <laughs> piece by piece. All right. Oh, yeah. Next to here and here. <laughs> yeah. We've been here. It's always gonna be a bad All right. Well. Well. <laughs> this is absurd, guys. You just got that horse. You taught it tricks on the way. <laughs> like... Okay. I think I like Quentin Tarantino's movies, right? Um, generally, everything that we've seen has just been absolutely amazing, right? Uh, I would say that the, the ones that I've seen recently are probably better than the original ones that we saw, right? The original one, like Pulp Fiction, it was okay. I probably should probably rewatch that, maybe, guys, right? But I do think that these newer Tarantino movies were much better than the older ones. Uh, in terms of how it was filmed, breathtaking, um, they obviously had the budget for it and they utilized it. Um, and kind of as expected, once that uh, the table scene began, right? Um, it kind of reminded me of... Uh, an extremely, extremely large budgeted film. Again, the other half of the film was great, but the second half was just, bro, how much money did you spend on that one shot? <laughs> right? I mean, that's really what that was. I mean, they, they invested heavily. Uh, in terms of the story, the story itself was a mm, historical fantasy. Okay. Um, extremely reminiscent of the new, the remake of Birth of a Nation. Uh, another historical fantasy. Um, I think that uh, if you were to enter into the mind of someone that was being held in bondage, uh, this is probably what would have escaped the mind. Um, just I'm telling you, this is probably what everyone wanted at that very specific time. Um, so I don't really, I mean, we can't judge it off of history here, guys, because this isn't, this didn't happen, right? This is just a, hmm. Maybe what people feared also at the same time, right? Uh, there were there were like like slave owners or slave owning families that feared something like this could happen, and it should have. Um, if you're going to hold someone in bondage, you deserve every single horrible thing that happens to your existence, right? Uh, not just you, anyone who benefited from it. Um, so that's how that works for me, at least internally. Uh, but overall, as a film, the film itself was great, uh, and again, I would just class it as uh, historical fantasy. That's really what this is here, guys. Um, Leonardo's uh, acting ability is absolutely phenomenal. He, he, he consistently blows me away now, guys. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson also did his thing here, guys. I, I'm not sure I hated a, a, a character more than ever. Now, all the movies that we've seen, I'm telling you this right now, the character that I've hated the most is that character, right? And I think it has a lot to do with, obviously, what he represented, what he is, right? Um, yeah, Do, no respect, not a single bit of, like you, like Jamie Foxx Django was acting like this. You were that. So who was worse? Him. You deserved that, bro. And Sheba should not have been let go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, when we first encountered Sheba during the Mandingo fights, okay, I was like, I, I smelt her energy. Okay. Uh, and so that in itself was enough for me to say she should have been right next to Steven. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but listen, if you guys would like to see the full length reaction to this movie it is on Patreon at the second tier and you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day uh, thoroughly.